Hi, Dominic. Great to have you again. So this time you are going to tell us about how scientists are searching for the aliens out there in the universe. Yes, that's right. Thanks for having me again.、Uh, I'm very happy to discuss our ongoing search for what we call exoplanets. These are planets beyond our own solar system, and whether they、uh, they contain alien life. So here on planet Earth, life comes in many different shapes and sizes, from the smallest bacteria to the largest plants and animals. But in this long list of known living organisms here on Earth, all of them have something in common. They require water to maintain their biology. Since more than two thirds of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans, small rocky planets with large oceans beyond our solar system are very good places to search for alien life. To have a, a chance of finding aliens, maybe bacteria or even plants and animals like us on exoplanets, astronomers need to find small rocky planets with large quantities of liquid water. So, how do these scientists find the exoplanets at first place, Dr. Menek? Well, there are a few different ways of doing this, but one of the most successful is called the transit method. Imagine looking through a telescope and you're looking at a star. If anything passes in front of that star, like a planet, it will block out some of the starlight. And this, in astronomy, is called a transit. The bigger the planet, the more starlight it will block. If astronomers use telescopes to measure the light from a star over a long period of time and make what we call a light curve, astronomers can spot these transits and measure the size of the planet. Once the planet has revolved around the star in a circle and got back to where it started again, it will block out some of the starlight once again, and this allows astronomers to measure the planet's orbital period. That means how long it takes for the planet to go around the star, and it's what it, we call a year here on Earth. Wow! So, how many planets have we detected so far using the transit method? Well, as of today, it's about six thousand, which is quite a large number. With most of these exoplanets being discovered using the transit method, with space telescopes like NASA's Kepler and TESS space telescopes, once a planet is detected, we can use some of the largest telescopes here on Earth to measure the mass from the relative motion of the planet and the star orbiting each other. This is what we call the radial velocity method in astronomy, and it requires us to split the star's light into its component colors, what we call a spectrum. When the distant star is moving towards us relative to the planet, the spectrum gets a little bit of a boost, and when the star is moving away from us relative to the planet, it gets a little bit of a drag. And the size of this effect allows astronomers to measure the planet's mass, because since more massive planets have a bigger influence on their star, it's quite similar to when you, an ambulance is travelling towards you. Its siren has a higher frequency, but once it's moved. Past you and now traveling away from you, its siren sounds lower. It has a lower frequency. Using the transit detections from space telescopes and the the radial velocity measurements of the planets from the ground, astronomers have found some really interesting exoplanet systems, including some planets that have two stars instead of one. Okay, so so far, have you found any signs? Of alien life yet? Well, the jury's still out, so、uh, not quite yet. But、uh, in the future, there'll be the next generation of space telescopes that are specifically designed to measure the chemistry of the atmospheres of these exoplanets and directly detect whether their atmospheres contain the signatures of life, such as the water or the carbon dioxide that living organisms breathe. So there is still quite a lot more work to do, but the、uh, the future is very exciting for exoplanets. Great. So we have come to almost the end of our conversation for today. Any final messages? Yes, absolutely. There is always a very good chance of finding alien life on exoplanets in the universe because there are so many planets out there. Based on current results, astronomers predict that almost all of the stars in our Milky Way galaxy have, on average, at least one planet. That means our chances of finding planets very similar to Earth, with possible alien life, is not so bad at all. Thank you so much, Dominic, and great to have you again. I hope to see you soon next time, and thank you so much for the fans out there too. Bye bye. Thanks for having me. Bye.